People keep asking me if I'm back. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm back to podcasting. Yeah, because we do a podcast every week and this is the John Wick Geek History Lesson. So your movie retrospective on John Wick is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Jonathan Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or assassin from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour, except today. Today's a very exciting. Episode. Well, today we are teaching Bam. them about something. Well, yes, sort of. but not in our tradition. This is a non-traditional episode. This is a celebratory episode. This is a celebratory episode, everybody, because cue the music. Dee 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 dee. This is the 300th episode of Geek Woo! History Lesson, everybody. The 300th episode. I don't want to hear any guff from any of you out there that are saying like, hey, Jason and Ashley, you actually had episode zero. So this is actually episode 301. Well, you know what? I deleted that episode it's out of the feed. not in the feed anymore. It's not in the feed anymore. And you only heard it if you listened in like the first two or three years. But the 300th episode, Ashley, mm-hmm. I cannot believe we are still going. I cannot believe we have finally made it to John Wick of all things. Yeah. But that all happened because of our amazing listeners. So first off, let's just do this. I want to say thank you. If you have been listening since episode one, even if you've been listening since episode 290 and you've now gone back and and, and, and you're still catching up with us, thank you. Uh, it is because of all of you out there that we have made it to 300 episodes. It's because of all of you out there that we have um, kept doing this. Yeah, and grown and taken it all over the country and done all kinds of wild stuff with our little with our little show we used to record in the closet. That's right. We started recording this in a closet. Yep. With no air conditioning. That was a heck of a thing. Now, actually, why are we talking about John Wick for our 300th episode of all subjects? So if people will cast their mind back to last year when we were doing a lot of Studio Ghibli movies, movie retrospectives, we did one on Howl's Moving Castle. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jason, for some reason, brought up John Wick. No, 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 no. Actually, uh, uh, you are the reason why we talked about John Wick, because I believe you made a reference to Baba Yaga. Who was coming up in Spirited Away. Yes. And I said, do you mean John Wick? Because that is his assassin name, that he is Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. And then from there, it became a recurring joke to hashtag John Wick yes. And we said that if over 50 people hashtag John Wick Yes on our Twitter at GHL Podcast for an upcoming episode, we would do John Wick. Yes. And my God. Now we're doing John Wick. (laughs) Now we're doing John Wick. Um, Here are some of the amazing people that are great listeners to this podcast. And also, they are people that tweeted John Wick Yes. So go ahead. Sorry, Ashley. Bob Flores. Uh, Austin Charles. NB Writer. At GaGeek87. Plasmadam. At Troy to go. At Audrey Charlene. Ryan Rains, longtime at, listener. At N. Kosi Tiefenbach. Adam Grunther, longtime listener. Kevin Schofield. Nick Fisher. Ryan Alcantara. Michael Miller. At Joe Dama. Hi, Albert. Yeah, Tara Samak. Jack Roca, longtime listener. David Torres. At J. Scognamio. Nathan McKenzie. Longtime listener featured on Geek History Lesson. At Wandering Rogue One. At Adelaro. Tony Cabello. Cabe- Cabrero. Thank you. At Spiderhawk. Jason C. Powell. Uh, Cody Bond. Mark A. Smith. Alexander Brito. Andy Babcock. Nathan Hartwig. De- Derek Nicewanger. Tom Trainer, longtime listener. Brandon Marino, longtime yeah. listener. Yeah. Armando Chavez. Chelsea Beal. Taylor Forbes. At G Soto87. David Lewis. At Roman Salas88. Lucas Dennison. At Griff S. David Lee. Trey McKnight. At Jewel05. At Stick Person underscore. Sean Ferreira, longtime listener. At Arisen Phoenix. At Kevbro18. Jimmy Dunn. Katrina Ah. Fu Huang. Wesley Marshall, longtime listener. At Anime NES. Uh, Garrick Smalley. At Shans Massey. 
Ali Hennigan. At Vil Cab. At Faulty Wizard. At Misha Nitz, longtime listener. Maria Wren. Tessa Short. A.R.T. Ramlakan. Tim Tang. Long time and soon. at Sailor Spork. So all of those people, and everyone, thank you so much for bearing with us on that long list. Every, all those people hashtagged John Wick Yes. It's their fault. It is their fault. <laughs> uh, but they are also awesome listeners. And man, this is going to be a fun 300th episode. Totally. Um, you know, so a lot of people requested John Wick Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's some of the amazing supporters that have kept this podcast going for 300 episodes. But also, we have to thank as well a lot of amazing people that we have over at patreon.com slash John Wick, J-A-W-I-I-N. Now, we say a lot of times that the reason why this podcast stays free and the reason why this podcast kept going, because about two years ago, this podcast almost completely went away. Mm-hmm. And it was saved by the support over at our Patreon because our patrons um, helped us when we uh, one of us lost our jobs mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Um, it really helped the podcast stay around. And it's really cool, guys, because we do lots of cool things over there. Right now, we are running a special offer for this new video documentary series that we're doing called Blackest Night Club. Ashley, what is that? Blackest Night Club is our 10-part video doc series about the... DC Comics event Blackest Night that many people consider to be the greatest DC event. The next one that's probably going to get adapted mm-hmm. into live action. I put it action. in my top five. Yes, you did. And uh, not only are we going through the event, but in Crisis Club, we did one issue, one episode. Now we're doing between three and five Yeah, because there's a lot of Blackest episode. Night. Um, and Jason is doing so much research. Oh, dear God. And we're going into so many crazy theory territories. But it's really different from Crisis Club. Mm-hmm. It's something that's really exciting, and it's allowing us to be creative and it's something that we can only do under the auspices and the generosity of Patreon. I think it's really freaking cool and we're giving away more cool swag. So if you join under the special offer, you'll yep. be sure to get all the swag. Yeah. If you join in the special offer, you get an exclusive art print by Brian Ward and an exclusive bookmark that you will not get at any other time during the club. So you can sign up at any time and you'll get the video documentary series, but you will only get the exclusive prints during the special offer. So head over to patreon.com slash John if that sounds interesting to you. All right. 300 episodes has brought us to the 300th the continental (laughs) uh ashley it's time to talk about john wick baba yaga the boogeyman the man who's back the man who says oh a lot let's get into the 10 cent origin of john wick what is the 10 cent origin it is the first part of the podcast where we give you all the basics who's it's and what's it's in case you get invited to a cool cocktail party at the continental you'll know what's going on with john wick yes john wick is a 2014 neo-noir action thriller it was produced by thunder road pictures summit entertainment and Lionsgate's films it was directed by chad Stil- Lesk. I don't know exactly how to say his last name. It was written by Derek Kolstad. It was his debut movie. It was released in October 24th of 2014. It starred Keanu Reeves, Alfie Allen, Adrian Palicki, Bridget Moynihan, Dean Winters, Ian McShay, John Leguizamo, Willem Dafoe, and uh, the gentleman from Fringe that we love, Lance Reddick. Yes, and uh, Michael Nyquist. Yes. Nyquist. Yes. And, uh, AKA the one from the good girl with the dragon tattoo movies. Yes, in the first installment in the John Wick series, and it has retroactively been retitled John Wick Chapter One. Yeah. All right, let's move into the meat cute. Can I tell you a fun fact about uh, the Tencent origin? Yeah, sure. Uh, Thunder Road Pictures is uh, Eva Longoria's production company. So she is directly responsible for John Wick happening. She championed this project. Oh, good for her. I just think that's cool. Cool. Yes, Meet Cute. The Meet Cute is the part of the podcast where we tell you where we first met John Wick and how cute Keanu Reeves was. Yes, Ashley, how did you meet Cute? The Cute John, uh, John Wick Keanu Reeves. He's pretty cute in John Wick. Um, you said, let's watch John Wick like six months after the movie came out. Because mm-hmm. it was a bit of a sensation if people can cast their minds all the way back to yes, we didn't the see, second year of Geek History we can, Lesson. We can do this meet cute together. That's we very can, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, it had just come out on you know streaming and uh, video, digital, and yeah. DVD and Divida, and we had decided that like so many people had talking about it. We actually, you know, we listened to the Morning Stream. Mm-hmm. It was one of our favorite podcasts, uh, hosted by Scott Johnson and uh, Brian, Ibbitt. Brian Ibbitt, who has been a guest this podcast before. So Scott. Oh yeah, Scott has too. I'm yeah. sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, anyways, and they 
were talking about it a lot. Yeah. And so I was like, I have to see what this movie is because everybody's talking about it because I just thought it was a generic action movie. Yes. Which, to be fair, Keanu's done a handful of. He has done a lot of them. Johnny Mnemonic. Um, <clears throat> Anyways. But not only that, but like a lot of L.A. industry people were like, John Wick John is low-key excellent. Yeah. And so I rented it Mm -hmm. and I started watching it. And about 20 minutes into the movie, or 10 minutes into the movie, actually, you you bumped out at the first time that we watched this back in 2014. Yeah, they killed the dog. And I said, F this noise, I'm done. I watched it. Not only did they kill the dog, Mm. but my beloved Alfie Allen killed the dog. Mm -hmm. So I felt personally offended that one of my favorite actors killed my favorite breed of dog. And then they killed Alfie Allen. Yeah, but that's like Thank God. an hour. No, I love Alfie. <laughs> He's a real dick in this movie. I'm sorry. Um, well, we have a. I have a fun fact about that later on. So, anyways, um, <laughs> so then I watched it for the podcast. Yeah, that's and then you watched I it for the podcast. Uh, and I have seen John Wick two and three, and I'll definitely go see John Wick four in the theaters. Yes. So there we are. There you go. Yeah. That's our BQ. All right. So now let's get into the history of the 101, which is actually a retrospective about John Wick. All right. So Ashley. Yeah. We guys got to tell everybody, there will be spoilers from this point forward, although we just gave you a major spoiler. a six-year-old movie. Yeah, so if you have not seen John Wick, this is on you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the good, then I want to talk about the bad, and then let's talk about some fun facts. The ugly? Well, the bad already covers that. Okay. If you say so. So, since this is your second time through of this movie, <laughs> almost... <laughs> This is the time you had it's to watch your it. your second time through. I'm going to start. I want you to start with, I want you to name, what do you think is one of the best aspects of John Wick? What do you think is the thing this movie does better than, or, or did really well? However you want to uh, say Lighting. That's the best thing about this movie. You mean movie. the cinematography? Yeah. Is, is, is the, actually the color palette. Yeah. Um, which is something that we talked a lot about when we were originally talking about the Marvel Netflix shows. Mm-hmm. They do, especially Daredevil and Luke Cage, a really good job sticking to a color palette, which gives each of them a very distinctive uh, a voice is not the right word, but I'll Look. go with that. Yeah. Um, and sense. And most movies work on, and I learned this from Jason. Uh, a blue and orange mm-hmm. color grade. And most movie posters are Thanks, like that. Thanks, Michael Bay. Yeah. There's been some really beautiful ones. A Man from Uncle is just those colors, and it's a mm-hmm. stunning poster. Uh, however, John, Most of the Star Wars movies are those colors as well. Yes. John Wick is much more red and blue. Mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful that I think half the reason that people like it is the mood and what it evokes. And you made this observation when we were watching it because I commented that it's it's much more well shot than I thought. Mm-hmm. Like a standard action movie is like a lot of locked off shots. And this and is quick cuts. Yeah. Very beautiful. Very artful. You get to see the fights. They pick their set dressing very well. They pick their locations very well. And um you were like, they're doing a great job at making him look like a boogeyman, mm-hmm. which is a detail that if you're not familiar with the name Baba Yaga, the mythos, or if you just haven't made it to the end of the movie where they start to explain a little bit about that, um, it might not be a conscious thing that people pick up on. But I think I just think that overall goes to the craftsmanship of this movie is just higher than uh, I'm going to say a name and I don't mean to insult this person. I met them once and they were great than like a Jason Statham movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I would consider to be a fairly like run of the mill action movie. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and I just think I think this movie is beautiful. It is beautiful. Which is why, uh, you know, a lot of incredible fan art came out of this movie. So that's Did a lot my, of incredible fan art came out of this movie? I have seen so much John Wick fan art and a lot of it is very, very beautiful. Let me ask you this. Do you think that's because people just like that he likes the dog? I think that uh, it hits okay. that like Tumblr aspect of so, like, oh, the dogo. That's um. That I have two reasons why I think this movie transcended. Okay. And one of it is the dog. Okay. Is is hitting that culture. Yeah, I think mm. that's a huge part of it. I also think people like Keanu Reeves. Uh, you'd like to say that we were in the Keanu sauce? We are in the Keanu sauce. This movie, I think, started it. Keanu is kind of... Um, become the face of diversity in this really interesting way because, you know, the if we're going to be honest, the only reason he got work when he was younger is because he's pretty white passing. Yes, very um, true. He which, doesn't, I, which is he, not a knock against him. He doesn't look Asian. That he is doesn't true. look super Asian. Nope. But now he's kind of become the face of like, I'm an Asian leading man. And that's what and like that is very cool. Mm-hmm. And that is very like of the moment right now. Um, you know, and, and then I also think um, I also think a lot of people think Keanu Reeves is really handsome. So sure. those, those are my trifectas. But ultimately, my real answer mm-hmm. is I think it's a pretty movie. I think 
I'm going to say, and I think there, you cannot talk about John Wick without talking about how, why it blew up. Absolutely. Like, why did this movie blow up? Because, look, I like this movie, but when you think about it, the plot line of this movie is very simple. Very simple. It's the guy's dog gets killed and he goes on a revenge thing and he, he just eventually kills everybody. Devil's Advocate, though, does an action movie need to be more than <clears throat> that? Well, here's the thing that I was going to say. Uh huh. I think that's the reason why mm-hmm. it transcends. This movie, from all aspects, is trying to pass it off as simple. Mm-hmm. And the story is very simple, mm-hmm. but it is a simple story on top of a five layer cake because <laughs> the minute they introduce the continental, uh-huh. the minute they introduce, oh, the cops are bought off. There's the mythos, minute, yeah. The minute they introduce that there is this world of secret assassins mm-hmm. that nobody knows about. This is no longer a simple movie. Mm-hmm. The story is simple, mm-hmm. but the world is not simple at all. And I think it's a little bit of that um, a duality mm. that the story is very simple. It's a man's revenge on top of like, what is this world? Like, what is going on with this hotel that you can't fight in? And it's very much like Highlander. That's like, you know, it's sacred like ground, sacred yeah. ground that you can't fight. What is with these coins? They've bought off the cops. This world, it, when you're watching this movie, you're thinking that, that oh, this is just an, a simple assassin working for the mob. And once you watch it, you're like, whoa. And actually, to be honest with you, it's probably one of the smartest things in the writing and the fact that they built this amazing world that m- immediately makes you be like, I want to see more of that world. That's interesting. Uh, to throw back to another thing that we talked about very recently with an Asian lead, uh, that's kind of what I said about Avatar, is on its face, it's very simple. But then the more you dig down, it's more complicated. So I just think that's uh, I think that's an interesting observation. Well, the other thing you have to talk about is that in terms of simplicity, at this point in 2014, you know, we're we're into a couple. We're four or five into the Fast and the Furious franchise. Each Fast and the Furious movie gets bigger, insane, more crazier. Mm hmm. We had just seen the Bourne Ultimatum, mm-hmm. which was Shaky Cam Deluxe. We have Daniel Craig James Bond. We have two Daniel Craig James Bond yeah. movies at this point. Um, so action movies, I think, I think it, we have three. Uh, did Skyfall come out in 2014? I don't well, know. Skyfall came out in 2013. <clears throat> okay, sure. Sounds good. Um, so at this point, I think action movies are... Kind of getting, and also you think about we're post Avengers at this point. Uh huh. Action movies are kind of stale, right? Mm-hmm. It's actors not doing their own stunts. Mm-hmm. It is overcomplicated action set pieces, mm-hmm. and it is overcomplicated plots. Mm-hmm. This movie is like, no, you know what the action scenes are going to be? A dude with a gun punching his way through people. That's it. And we're going to show you the dude. Punching his way through people. And I think that's the other reason why this movie, again, they just focused on, let's prove that this dude is a badass. I remember you talking about it, and you were the one who told me that Keanu did all his own stunts. Mm-hmm. He does most of it. He does, like I think, 90% of them. And I was like, okay, great. And you're like, but they're good. <laughs> yeah. Well, because there was a video that went viral of after this movie. Of the training, right? Of him training. Yeah. At a, on a gun range and it is insane you're like holy crap he mm-hmm. can actually do this stuff you made an observation during the movie that I thought was so interesting where you said that he was doing a great job handling his weapons yes, he, as as a professional would have with muzzle mm-hmm. awareness and clearing corners which is something that you scream about when it's done poorly so would you talk about that a little bit for people who might not know okay so the best example of that is, is that if you've ever seen the movie The Dark Knight Rises and I think this is a bad example of that um, there's a scene where John Blake walks into to uh, Gordon's hospital room Mm -hmm. and it's the idea that Bane is supposed to have sent somebody to kill James Gordon. Blake walks into the room and he just walks in and Gordon is hiding beside the door Uh where you couldn't see, you know, if you're just walking into a room and he puts a gun right on John Blake's head and goes, don't forget to clear the corners, rookie. Um, One of the first things that I learned um, in the army um, when I was in and when I was going through combat training is that they teach you this idea of clearing the corners. So like as soon as you turn into a room, you look left, you look right Mm -hmm. and you point your weapon left and right. Because Mm -hmm. if there's somebody hiding in the corner, which you can't see when you're outside the door, you can shoot them. Yep. Uh, They can't sneak up on you. 
They can't do what James Gordon did to John Blake. <laughs> um, and John Wick, if you look, if you watch, and he does this in every movie, the minute he walks into a through a door frame, he immediately looks left and right. Mm-hmm. And he points his weapon there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's such a great job. Yeah, the way Keanu handles every one of the weapons, like it immediately proves that he is an expert. And again, that's another reason why I think this movie transcended. I think because, again, simple story, great world, great stunts, but there's an authenticity to this movie Mm -hmm. because we can see that it's Keanu doing most of these things. Yeah. We can see that it's Keanu handling a weapon correctly. Mm -hmm. And that's something at this point, look, I think Daniel Craig could probably beat the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. But do I believe that Daniel Craig could clear a room and shoot everybody in it? No. Not in a million years. Fair. Do I believe Keanu Reeves could? Yes. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Yes, I do. Actual ninja. <laughs> yes, I think Keanu Reeves is an actual assassin. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually think a huge part of the reason why people like this movie is the cast as well. Because it's a pretty formidable cast. Yeah, Ian McShane. For what... At the time, felt like a nothing movie. And the mayhem guy from the insurance commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole time, Jace was like, what insurance company is this for? I don't know. <coughs> He's mayhem. Mm, excuse me. Uh, that guy's like 55, by the way. He looks, looks incredible. Great. Looks great. Um, but you have a lot of very recognizable genre actors here or people who've come off of pretty iconic franchises. But... They're only in a handful of scenes. Yeah. And I think that's the way they convinced some they, of these people to, to be come the and be like, hey, we'll yeah. shoot you out in 12 days. Yeah. You know, we'll shoot you out in a week. Yeah. Um, and when we started watching it, Jason was like, your boy is in it. And I was like, who's my boy? And you were like, Lance Reddick. And I was like, but also Alfie Allen. Yeah. Like any anyone who is kind of in the geek sphere going into this is going to have one or two other people that they like. And I think that's one of the reasons why people responded to it so powerfully. Yes. Um, so let's also talk about um, the way I want to go back to the the way this movie is visually shot and the way that like sure. for the 10, the, like the opening like 10 minutes of this movie, the only dialogue you hear is the video of his wife talking to John Wick, that little that quick little like, oh, this is yep. the end of the movie. And then we flash back. And this movie does a really good job of showing you the visuals. I love like walking around the house, seeing the bathroom the counter house. that is not cleaned, mm-hmm. you know, compared to his. Mm-hmm. When so you like you immediately know like, oh, she's dead. And and again, like even the shot of him coming out of the shadows to get that um, assassin guy outside the door, mm-hmm. you know. Um, this movie is 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 very well shot, and also a, a big thing that helps that I want to talk about is the score. Mm-hmm. The score of this movie is really good, and they they have this like John Wick theme that ke- it actually continues um, throughout in the, the future uh, movie. Yeah, it, it's actually in chapter two and chapter three. Like John Wick has a a specific theme, which is really cool. It's interesting that you brought up um, the silence in the beginning of this movie because the first person who says the name John Wick is John Leguizamo's character, yep. the mechanic, and that comes about 15, 20 minutes into the movie, which is traditionally when you get a big re- your first big reveal uh, in, in like script-telling story structure. So I thought that was interesting. Yes. Um, all right, Ashley, do you want to talk about some um, fun facts about this movie? Or really, let me talk, Okay, let, let's talk about this real quick. We do have to be fair. Let's talk about the bad. What in this movie does not work? I'm going to say Adrian Pilecki. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's in, in the interest. I don't of full buy her. As, I don't buy her as an assassin. I don't like her in anything. Um, so I didn't like her in this. I think there's a lot of better options than her. And in 2014, there were better options than her. She was coming off that hot Wonder Woman pilot, Ashley. You know what? But Gal Gadot also was in Hollywood in 2014. That's true. So, I mean, you could have hired her and she would have been way cheaper. Um, you know, is an actress who that role should have gone to, but probably didn't have a big enough star to go out for it, would have been like a Katie Lotz type. Um, mm, interesting. The, the, my issue with her character is you can always see this stunt double. And when you have her next to Keanu, who's doing like 90% of his own work... Uh, you know, it just becomes a little lackluster. Um, I would say a weakness of this movie is how simple the plot is. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the movie, like I was a little like, oh, that's it? And ultimately, all of the characters, except maybe Lance Reddick, are deeply unlikable. 
Well, that's the point. They're in a world of I assassins. Underst- I understand. You know, I understand. But uh, you know, they're also to, I get like big tinges of Highlander in this movie, which to, I love. To make an easy comparison, in James Bond, they're all assassins, but we spend more time with them as characters. So, like, you like Felix Leiter, you like James Bond, even though they're bad dudes who do bad things. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a little. We have a little less character development on the John Wick side of things, which is also fine because it's not the point of this movie yes now I really I want to talk about before uh, we get to some of these fun facts um, the biggest fun fact you have to talk about this movie is that um, the original title of the movie was Scorn and it was actually about an older aged assassin that's one of my facts he was supposed to be 60 yes and uh, Keanu Reeves was attached to this project before the directors now Mm -hmm. yes I know we said there was only one director there's technically actually two directors in this movie. Yeah, but per the DJ, you can only credit one director. Yes, I want to talk about that. Um, so, Keanu Reeves actually contacted Chad Stel- Steleski, who is the credited director, and David Leach, who he met on the set of The Matrix because they were stunt performers and choreographers on The Matrix. One of them I know doubled as Neo. Doubled as Neo, yes. He wanted to bring them onto the script. Now, um, David Leach is the uncredited mm. director. Um they directed the film, actually, John Wick, as a team, and it was later ruled by the Directors Guild of America that only Stileski would get the credit. Now, I believe... Stileski was Keanu's stunt doubles, per my notes. Yes. Now, I believe, um, and I will look this up, that one of these gentlemen, I believe David Leach, goes on to direct Deadpool. I believe that is correct. I know one of them does, yes. for sure. Uh, um, so, actually, what other fun facts do we have from this movie? Uh, Yeah. So, Keanu Reeves did most of his own stunt work, but he doesn't consider himself a stunt man. And the reason that I want to put this in there is because if you watch a lot of his interviews around this time, everyone's like, you're a stunt man, you're a stunt man. He's like, I am absolutely not. I don't take on those risks. I get paid much more. Um, He really draws the line and is one of the only action actors who calls out what is so important about stunt people and the work that they do. So I think that is very cool. Just to go back to that point we're speaking about, David Leach goes on to direct Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2. Atomic Blonde, which actually... um, visually is like a cousin mm. of John Wick. Whereas Chad, much less good whereas Chad Stileski has stayed on and has directed every John Wick movie. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Michael Nykvist, who played Vigo, had 80 stitches put into his head after a stunt went wrong while filming. Oof. So good on him, but also that is so many stitches. Jason, this is a, um, a fact, but I'm going to phrase it to you as a question. Okay. John Wick has a back tattoo. <coughs> it's a Latin phrase. Uh-huh. It says, Fortis Fortuna Aduat. Do you know what that means? I only know about this because of a Deep Space Nine episode that is titled this exact same thing. It's a, it's Fortune Favors the Bold, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, Latin. Now, this is going to create an interesting conversation piece. This is one of two clues. Because here's the thing. Not much is known in three movies about John Wick's life. You learn a little bit more about John in John Wick 3 about like where he came from. But this tattoo, uh, Fortune Favors the Bold, is a common creed or motto of many military units, especially mm-hmm. special forces yes. military units. Um, also, John Wick wears his watch like um, Special Forces does, which is where you don't wear it on the top of your arm. Yeah. You wear it on the inside of your arm. Um, so the so you can still use your arm as a, a blunt interest and, and not break your watch. Um, there is a cold theory or an interesting theory that everybody thinks that John Wick is an ex Special Forces member. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I could buy that. Yeah, I, I explain. It does explain like why he's so um, skilled. I take umbrage with the fact that he spells his name J O H N, and they still call him Jonathan because Jonathan is traditionally spelled J O N. Oh yeah. And I'm like, no. That's not Well, the only character spelling. calls him Jonathan is uh, Ian McShane. But still. Yeah. Uh, There's a, also a secret theory out there that I've read many times on the internet that Ian McShane is secretly his father. And that... Um, huh. Because as, if you go on to watch John Wick 2 and 3, you learn that Ian McShane breaks the rules of the Continental, spoilers for a future movie, um, to benefit John Wick. Mm. And there's a lot of people who are like, why is he so kind and caring mm-hmm. to this just assassin dude and there, yeah there's a weird theory that a lot because it is you later learn that John Wick is an orphan 
Yes. Um, um, but, and that John Wick is not his name. Yeah. So a lot of people think. Wikipedia will tell you what his yeah. name is. Uh, but a lot of people think that, um, that Ian, there's a weird theory out there that Ian McShane is his real dad. Interesting. Um, Lance Reddick also kind of goes out of his way to not protect John Wick, <laughs> mm-hmm. but also like kind of look out for him. Mm-hmm. Lance Reddick, by the way, awesome in this movie. Well, let's talk about that. So, so good. So um, John Wick, a lot of this movie is is the impression of that he has a reputation, right? Yeah. <clears throat> that he has... Um, you know, he's the boogeyman. Uh-huh. People are like, oh man, he's the worst of worst. But we also see a lot of people treat John with respect they in this movie. They care about him, yeah. Now, do we think that John Wick is just a nice guy? Is that the real... What do you he's think not the re- particularly nice, though. I you mean, know, he's not rude or anything. Well, he but- could have killed that one guard outside of the club. Mm-hmm. Instead, he said... That's true. He said, take the night off. Yeah. And but he, he has a relationship. He knew that guy's name. Sure. That guy said, thank you. I think... <coughs> I think it's an Excuse interesting um, arbitrary. I'm over a cold, everyone. I'm so I apologize. Arbitrary thing that we like to do in fiction, where he's he's um, he does bad things, but he's not a bad person, mm-hmm. right? Because um, if he were a bad person, he would be the villain of this movie. Sure. And I think that's what scenes like that are trying to impart um, is that he does have a heart, and that's the reason why he goes. That's the reason why he does this because of a dog, because mm-hmm. of a good little pupper. Hey, everyone, I have to interrupt the show for a second here to bring up Operation We Need New Mics. That's right. Our podcast mics are six years old and we need new ones. And how are we going to accomplish that? By telling you about the sponsor of today's episode, Podcorn. Look, it's 2020. You have a podcast, right? We have a podcast. It's a podcast world. And what do you need for your podcast? You need a sponsor. Well, that's why Podcorn is for you. Podcorn is a marketplace website that connects podcasters to amazing podcast sponsorship opportunities, such as host read ads, interview segments, topical discussions, and more. In fact, that's how Podcorn is sponsoring today's episode, because we here at Geek History Lesson use Podcorn and we love it. There's no middleman, and podcasters of all sizes and shapes can browse and choose opportunities right there on their platforms, even setting their own rates. So you want to click the link in the show notes today to sign up to Podcorn and start browsing sponsorship opportunities today. Go to podcorn.com slash podcasters and monetize your podcast right now. And now back to the show. What are the fun facts we have? So in the scenes where we see John in his house, the screen named Neo appears on a computer screen. That's cool. Um, because everyone in this movie also worked on The Matrix. I think that's really cute. Um, if you look up the screenshots, it's usually when he's sitting on the couch holding the puppy up and there's a laptop open. Oh, and you see Neo? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's cool. I, I think like that. That's really cute. Oh, so this movie is actually inside The Matrix. There you go. Woo, Got it. This is one of Neo's dreams. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, the nightclub fight scene, like the kind of the, one of the biggest action yeah. pieces in the movie. Apparently, Keanu Reeves learned and memorized that entire sequence the same day it was filmed. I've also heard. Which is fully effing insane. Okay, here's the other thing that's insane. Uh huh. I have heard that while he was filming that nightclub fight scene, that he had a fever. Okay, so I have. And he was um, sick. He was really sick, and he. Okay, so specifically when he shot the VIP room and the balcony scene, those were those were each a one day. Those were two days. Uh huh. Um, he was sick during that, and he was sick during. Um, the scene where he's being interrogated, where he's like, I guess I'm back. That's like some um, Gene Kelly singing in the rain with 102 fever. And that also, <laughs> that's really professional because you can't do those scenes without him. No. And he's like, no, I'm here. It'll be fine. I'm not going to pass away. Yeah, that he, uh, he, that he went through it. That's really cool. Yeah. But just to learn that amount of choreography, and it's not even to learn the choreography, but to learn how to execute it safely is very hard. Mm-hmm. There's sort of a rule with fight choreography that it's going to be um, for film an hour of rehearsal for a minute of shooting. It's usually way more than that. Um, so if you think about that and you watch, that is like a 20 minute sequence. Yeah, that's long. And he learned it all on the same day. Mm-hmm. So um, here is a full list of um, everyone who worked on the Matrix movies. Chad Stileski, Daniel Bernhardt, David Leach, and Randall Duck Kim. Randall Duck Kim. You mean that also worked on John Wick? Yes, okay. I apologize. Yep. Um, 
And I was like, that is, there's a longer list of people. No, nope, there's four people who made Matrix movies. <laughs> Randall Duck Kim is not an actor that I would have recognized, but mm-hmm. you recognize. So tell our listeners who he is and who he plays in the Matrix. Oh, he's the uh, in John Wick. He is the doctor who treats Keanu, mm-hmm. and in the Matrix uh, Reloaded, he's the keymaker. Yeah, and as yeah. soon as you said that, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's the keymaker. He actually appears again, I believe, in John Wick Three. Parabellum. Yes, in Parabellum. Yeah, I forget what the second one's called. I don't even remember. I don't know why I know that the third one is I called. I just called them Chapter 2, Chapter 3. Yes, uh, I think it was just called John Wick Chapter 2. I don't know. I'm certain it has a name. Anyway, um, Willem Dafoe was in this movie. We've talked nothing about him. And I will say this. I completely forgot that Willem Dafoe was in this movie. I just pretend that he. this is uh, the fever dream of the lighthouse character. But... So when you first see him, his character's name is Marcus, and he's uh, assembling his weapons Mm -hmm. uh, outside through the window. And then later on, he goes to stand outside of this same building. It's the building that doubled as the Daily Bugle in Mm -hmm. the 2002 Spider-Man movie. Yeah, it's a flat iron building. I thought that was really... I'm assuming that something they like that is intentional. That. They had to do that on purpose. There is no way that I was mean, unintentional. The Flatiron Building is an iconic New York City mm-hmm. building, um, but I just thought that was really cool. And it also shows that uh, if it was intentional, which I think you and I believe that it is, again, there's a lot of thought and care going into this movie where you could have, you didn't need to do this. Mm-hmm. It doesn't add or take away anything from Marcus. You only do that for geeks like us who are doing a podcast. Yeah. I thought that was really neat. Uh, in the original script, like Jason said, John Wick was written as, quote, a man in his mid-60s. Yep. Again, the original script was who, called Scorn. Who in their mid-60s was going to play this role? Uh, I could tell you. I mean, I guess Viggo Mortensen. No, I He's could, 64. I, I'm going to say a name. You're going to dislike this name. Uh, sure. Um, because this guy is a despicable person. Okay. Um, but he is a great film director. And he also did a movie that was very similar to this in the mid 2000s, where it's about a guy coming out of retirement. Uh, Mel Gibson. Ugh, I don't like that at all. Mel Gibson. I just know it's easier to find someone who can give this kind of a performance in their 40s sure. than in their 60s. Well, the, di- the difference is, I'll tell you this: if they had, if they had stayed with that, if they had gone with an actor in their mid 60s. They would not have been able to pull off the stunts, which is, I think, a big reason why this movie works. You also would have begged the comparison to movies like Red and The Expendables, yep. uh, which predate John Wick. <clears throat> uh, you talked a little bit about Alfie Allen and what a butthead he is in this movie. Yep. I saw Tarazov. Is that his name? I don't know. Yosef. Yosef. Sorry. I don't speak Russian. Chad Stileski and David Leach cast Alfie Allen in the role of Yosef Tarasov because they wanted him to look like, quote, a prick. That makes sense. He looks like a prick. Um, That makes me feel so bad. <laughs> look, 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 we talk about this all the time. There are certain actors in certain movies yes. where you're supposed to hate I them. Know. And you know what? You're supposed to hate Alfie Allen in this movie. You're supposed to think he's a coward. You're supposed to think he's a wimp. Mm-hmm. That means that that actor did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But I'm like, oh, what is it like to be the actor where everyone's like, yeah, man, you look like a prick. <laughs> Take the paycheck <laughs> and run. But now he's in Jojo Rabbit and he went to the Academy Awards. So he's, That's true. He's doing fine. Uh, the first studio note about the film when it went into active production is could they change, um, change the script so that Daisy survived? Now, Daisy is John Wick's beagle pup, and I have a fact about this in my research. Angel. Okay. Um, that beagle pup is actually named Andy. <laughs> okay. And the dog was eight weeks old when they filmed oh the movie. Oh, my God. So he was a real puppy. <laughs> He's a little baby. Oh, I mean, yeah, like it's not big enough to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. full grown. Uh, my favorite thing about Andy's performance as Daisy <laughs> is um, and there's several scenes, especially when the dog is like laying on John Wick's bed where that dog mm-hmm. is just staring off at their handler. Yeah. Do you know how they got the dog to uh, jump up on the bed and uh, lick Keanu Reeves' face? What did they put on his face? Mm-hmm. Bacon grease. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. so gross. It's usually peanut butter. Yeah, Andy loved bacon grease. <laughs> that, oh my God, I cannot imagine. So can you imagine John Wick? Can you imagine how she broke Reeves, out after that? Counter Reeves smelled like bacon grease <laughs> for, the, for those <laughs> scenes. What a, honestly, what a trooper. Yep. Screw doing it with a fever. That's the real, <laughs> that's bacon the grease. real uh, hero move. That's disgusting. Uh, and my last fact is though, even though Long- Eva Longoria and her production company produced the film, the directors never met her and she never went to set, which is not that unusual 
actually for a producer. It's just only funny because she's kind of famous. Now, I want to get into the weeds real quick okay. about John Wick <laughs> stuff because um, I want to talk about what we've been talking about. The main reason why we think this movie transcends mm-hmm. the stunts, the fights. Um, did you know, Ashley, that John Wick employs several different shooting styles and stances in the movie? Uh, I did. During close quarters battles, uh, he employs a center axis relock stance. And when at longer ranges, he employs the traditional weaver and isosceles stances. And now, also, John Wick has proven himself in this movie. Now, this is a little bit of movies because they combine fighting stances. Mm -hmm. But um, he is proficient with judo. There's tons of judo throws all over this. And ju- and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, is that the same thing as capoeira? Is capoeira different? Uh, I think it's different. Someone will tell us. Yeah. Uh, mainly the, the, the spot of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu is because he employs a Kimura shoulder lock at one point in the movie. Oh, which is I know a, exactly Which is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu move. Cool. Yeah. Which I thought I wanted to get into the weeds a little bit on that, you know, and stuff like that. Um, also, uh, I did find a note that the directors intentionally made sure that nobody said, whoa, in this movie. <laughs> in terms of going back to Keanu Reeves, Bill and Ted. Yeah, yeah, woes. yeah. Instead, um, they have several characters in this movie say, oh, I as, bet, a, as a homage. Oh, man. I would, I would kill for an homage of every time someone said whoa and then they had to cut (laughs) because you know the minute you're not allowed to do something it happens that's so funny yeah um, okay, so I want to give your final thoughts on this movie, and then we'll go to the recommended reading, Ashley. Yeah. So, okay, you 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 saw John Wick, the 300th episode. We finally made you with John. Hashtag John Wick, yes, baby. Thoughts? This movie was built up. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. This movie was built up a lot for me, and unfortunately, was it really? How everyone. Everyone, everyone was like, this is the action movies are changed forever. I this think, is amazing. Right. This is beautiful. It was on everyone's best of the decade list. Um, and I've seen several of the fights already. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly on Quarter Digital <laughs> talking about them. Um, so I feel like my expectations were too high for this movie going into it. Uh-huh. I think this movie's really well made. I totally understand what people react to in it. Um, but when we got to the end of it and I don't know really what I was expecting but I found the plot stuff dissatisfying and too simple mm-hmm. um, a lot of that is like I said the baggage that I brought into it mm-hmm. and I do I really do appreciate this movie and I really do understand why people like it I have no desire to watch any more John Wick movies right. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of where I come down on it mm-hmm. it was great I'll never see it again okay Tell me your final thoughts on John Wick. Uh, my final thoughts is that I think this is one of the best action movies of the last 10 years. Sure. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because who gives a damn about plot? Because I do. Uh, no, you plot, do. You're nope, a writer. No, I care about <laughs> character arcs. I do not care about plot. Because um, Fast and the Furious has plot coming out the wing wang that makes no damn sense. And that movie is, those movies, I'm sorry, everybody, if you like Fast and Furious, they're stupid movies. Yeah. And it's because their plots make no damn sense. It's the same plot as like Armageddon. I do not like that movie either. Why are we grabbing oil drillers from Texas to go to an asteroid? Because we need plot. Um, I love John Wick for the simple fact of when you back out and look at this movie is that this guy, when he loses his wife and he loses the puppy, thinks that he can go back into his old life and and be alone. And he only works alone. And in the final scene of the movie, he grabs another companion. Really cute, dog. Proving really cute little pity. that he has learned... That he cannot be alone. Mm. He cannot be alone because if he's alone, he becomes the disaster John Wick where he just murders everybody. He's not, though, he's not like super alone, though, because like Lance Reddick and Ian McShane, like there are people who are working on his side. But 
he doesn't see them as a side. That's fair. Because he's not omnipotent the way the camera is. Exactly. That's he fair. does not see them. Like, he doesn't see them. He, he doesn't see them as friend. Now, that's something that I think he, I think that's the lesson he learns in two, mm-hmm. is that he can trust them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the two and three f- learn this lesson less successfully because, you know, two and three have to keep coming up with situations mm-hmm. of like, why is John Wick still shooting people? Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. why hasn't he retired again? Yeah. Um, and Do you think there should have been no sequels? Um... Yes. You think it's stronger on its own? It is stronger on its own. Um, just like the Matrix movie. Absolutely. Uh, the first Matrix is perfect on its own. 100,000 million uh, and percent. And then two and three water, the, the money water. You know, I will say, like, I am glad there's more John Wick movies because uh-huh. the stunt sequences and the, and the action sequences are amazing, but... The situations they throw John into uh-huh. are very plotty. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and they get kind of ridiculous. Sure. Um, but no, I, I think I do like this movie a lot. Mm-hmm. And because it's so simple. Mm. And I think that it. I love movies that are simple. It's, it's the reason why we love Get Out. It's the reason why we love A Quiet Place. When you think about mm. both those movies, they are simple. There's not much to those movies. Um, and I don't think that's a, um, you know, I would rather see more movies like that. I actually, to be honest with you, we would rather see all action movies replicate John Wick. Sure. Give us an actor that can do the stunts mm-hmm. and just make it. Who cares about the stupid? You're never going to win an Oscar for your plot and your story in an action movie. You are going to win an Oscar for your fight scenes. Mm-hmm. So that's where you should put all of the effort is into your fight scenes. Who cares about the plot? Because we will come with you if your if your action scenes and your character arc is great. Mm. You know, that that's my feeling about it. I think John Wick's really good. So you heard it here first. Uh, Jason will go full John Wick on anyone who hurts Inter Briga. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> he expects you to love him that much. That's right. All right, let's go into the recommended reading, Ashley, or the recommended watching, I think. We have some of both. Oh, because there's a John Wick combat. Yes, there are. Oh, man. What is our recommended reading, Jason? Well, I need you to explain that, actually, because I'm a coffee guy. Okay. <laughs> uh, recommended reading is where <laughs> if me. you want more John Wick, you can go over to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Click on the little widgets, buy some of these from Amazon, and Jeff Bezos will give us money. So keep buying them, and we'll slowly bleed him dry. Oh, that's a good plan. Uh, my first installment in recommended reading is the first John Wick movie. Hey! My second installment in the recommended reading is the John Wick trilogy hey. collection. Hey! And there's going to be a fourth John Wick. They announced it. Yep, but I can't put that up yet. It's not out. Yeah. At the time of this recording. So Hello, feature people. Very Canadian when I said out right now. Eat. Uh, and my third, uh, this is the actual recommended reading, John Wick Volume 1 from Dynamite Comics. Written by Greg Pak, I believe. I believe so, yeah. yes. Uh, good... Asian American writer. Yeah. G- Greg Bach and Giovanni Vietta. Pretty sense. sure I crushed that. It's a prequel. Cool. So, All right. Now we're going into the next section of our podcast, the teaching tweet, which even though I don't want this to be part of the podcast anymore, everyone out of our loves it. So welcome, because now Ashley's going to make a statement that is 140 characters, because that was the old Twitter limit, not the new Twitter limit. When we started this podcast, and we invented podcasting. And eventually <laughs> it's going to be out on Twitter at GHL Podcast. Yes. John Wick. Good fights. Really pretty. Shame about the doggo. The pupper. <laughs> oh, that pupper. I'll put uh, a picture of the dog. Yeah. Pl- share like five pictures of the dog, like one for every day. Oh, my God. There's a different picture of Andy. How many days do you think are in a week? Five. <laughs> in, my, in my estimation, it's only five. All right. So now we're going to go into the honor roll. And everybody, that is where if you go over to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review, you can write anything you want. And we'll read it on the podcast as a thank you for helping us, uh, helping more people discover us in the Apple Podcast algorithm. Ashley, who are the people that are joining the honor roll this time? The first person joining the honor roll is SuperMonkey3304, who says, uh, it, This is amazing. I learned so much from this podcast, and you guys are hilarious. Highly recommend. Oh, thank you. Also joining them is BWARD028, pretty sure we know that person, who says, A new favorite podcast. This is without a doubt a new personal favorite podcast. I'll find myself listening to and from work as well as when I'm cooking. As a lifelong fan of comics and just about anything, 
other geekery. I often want to engage in that conversation. Luckily, from having now listened to several episodes, I'm convinced that Jason and Ashley will happily let me, if ever given the chance, as they are both very personable and seem to genuinely enjoy talking about this stuff. While each episode focuses on a single topic and only lasts an hour, you shouldn't expect the deepest of dives into every bit of minutia, but they perfectly designed the episodes to give you just enough information to encourage you to do a deep dive yourself. Love it. Looking forward to hearing a lot more from this duo. Wow, that was a great review. It's an amazing review. Wow. And rounding out. What are you cooking now? Uh, yeah, bward028. Let us know. Noodles? Tweet at GHL. I hope it's noodles. Rounding out the honor roll inductees is Guy Who Plays Halo. Could, <laughs> could be two of my ex boyfriends. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> who says, Love this show. If you ever want the most information and more importantly, entertainment, then this podcast is for you. Thanks, GHL, for being there every week with something I want to hear. So, Guy Who Plays Halo, B Ward 028, and Super Monkey 3304, thank you so much for your kind reviews. And welcome into the Teacher's Lounge. Yes, don't forget you guys can listen. Oh, the Teacher's Lounge, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Wick is, of course, our substitute teacher What this does week. he teach? Um, archery. <laughs> That's what Mr. Queen teaches. No, he. this is substitute teacher Mr. Wick <laughs> teaching archery. Um, but he's, I would have said dog grooming personally. Mm, I don't think they teach that in high school. Missed opportunity. At universities. <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways uh, don't forget you can listen to this podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts, guys. We are on Stitcher. We are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts. Also, you can follow this podcast on our various social media where you can suggest future lessons like the very amazing and long list that we're not going to do again, yeah. but they're amazing <laughs> people. Uh, Ashley, where can they do that if they want to suggest perhaps hashtag John Wick 2 yes yeah, John Wick 2 no <laughs> hashtag uh, John Wick 2 yes where could they do that if we get over we got over 50 if we get over 60 we'll do John Wick if we two. get over hashtag John Wick yes oh, wait John, John Wick, Wick 2, 2 yes over 60 we will do it uh, everybody everybody <laughs> This has been one of the greatest gifts of Geekish Wilson that we got to talk about John Wick. If we get to talk about John Wick 2, if I get to force Ashley to watch John Wick 2, because... If another dog dies, I swear to God. That has common in it. What? Yeah, Common is the villain of John Wick 2. I don't John know what that means. Common is an amazing actor slash rapper. I don't know who that You know is. Common. We've talked to, he's, he's been the choice to play Jon Stewart for several times. I don't know who that is. He's from Hell on Wheels. You, oh, I know who that is. You know exactly who it is. <laughs> I knew you knew who it was. Guys, this is why you should hashtag John Wick 2 yes, because we need to implant Common into Ashley's brain because she cannot remember him. If you know Common and you want to get him on the podcast, I'll never so, forget him after that. Uh, Ashley. Uh, where can they tweet that? Uh, GeekHistoryLesson.com, Facebook.com slash GeekHistoryLesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. So, tag at GHL Podcast be the only one on Twitter it. with a hashtag, John Wick 2 yes And Ashley, I expect you to share this out onto the Twitters. Sure. Yourself. Um, I also think it's interesting that you brought up Common being the villain because that's what our extra is going to be this week. Who should be the foe of the next John Wick movie? Oh, cool, cool, cool. Because I have uh, thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I do. I have a thought. Uh, I've had a theory. I mean, I had a big thought for who should who should have been the villain for three, and they didn't do it, and I was so mad about it. Yeah. Um, I actually for oh, I actually I'll have to look up that actor's name because the uh, the villain of John Wick three is great. Oh. Okay. Um, anyways, I was like don't give it away. <laughs> um. Anyways, um. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. At at Jawin, J A W I I N. You can follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V Robinson. Hashtag John Wick 2, yes. Jesus. And now we're to hashtag stick around. And this is the conversation that I want to have here. Okay, I was like, I mine is not in my notes anymore. Is John Wick a good guy or a bad guy? I want to talk about is John Wick justified? Uh. For all the people that he murders no. throughout movie one because no. of the pupper. No. 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 We, no. Please elaborate. You know, I've never been in a position where I've ever had to consider taking someone's life. And I will say that that's a real difficult moral gray area. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. Um, and I have very strong feelings about when that is um, acceptable and when that is unacceptable. And I think the... The sheer amount of bodies that hit the floor in this movie. At least 100. It's not good. Yeah, it's at it's, least 100 people. It's not good. Um, there's probably like 25 of them that I would have been like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. This is acceptable. Um, I, I think John Wick is ultimately a bad guy. Oh, 100%. Uh, so I don't think John Wick is a 
good person. I think there is no moral argument here that you can make for John Wick being a good guy because um, his ends do not justify the means. Yeah. If he had just killed Alfie Allen mm-hmm. or the other three dudes yeah, yeah, yeah. who came to his house, then I would be acceptable. But yeah, he dropped so many other guards <laughs> yeah. that it was ridiculous. He dropped a bunch of people who were, and I know this is a bad excuse, who were like truly just doing their job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dudes are just paying the bills. Yeah. You yeah. know, like um, like Gary and Frank or whatever the hell their names are. Who are the Gotham mooks? Gary and our mooks? Our mooks. Yeah, who are our mooks? Sal and Greg. Sal and Greg. Like Sal and Greg. There, do you know how many Sal and Greg? Gary Frank is a comic book artist. Do you know how many Sal and, and Greg's that John Wick killed in this movie? I mean, I will say, like, good for all the stunties. And you know, many of them played multiple guards. Oh, yeah. They but, were killed multiple times. Uh, no, I don't think John Wick is a good person. Um, I can't wait for people to fight with us about this. <laughs> eh, whatever. <laughs> All right. Doesn't Thank- mean he's not worth telling a story about. Yeah, Doesn't mean it's not an interesting totally. movie. Thank you so much for listening to Geek History Lesson. Thank you so much for listening for the past 300 episodes. I hope we listen to 300 more. And I hope that we do hashtag John Wick 2. Yes, very, very soon. I am Jason Andy the Puppy Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please kick down the door and dismiss the class? People keep asking me if I'm back. And I think, yeah, I'm going to be back next week. Class dismissed. <laughs>